Welcome again, true believers. It is I, Shane, and I'm here to talk to you about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the implications that the show has, and just give an overall feel and overall grade of what I think about the show and how I feel about the show. Now, first of all, well, two things I want to do. Firstly, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. All of you who watch the videos and you aren't subscribed, I really do appreciate your views, but leaving a comment, leaving a thumbs up, and, then subscri and subscribing really helps out the channel. Helps out smaller channels like my own so we can try to get to that higher point and try to do bigger and better things just like the bigger channels are doing. So, I thank you for your cooperation. Thank you for listening to me. And number two, I'm sorry this is out kind of late. You know, life. Life is life. What can you do about it? But let's go ahead and let's just do a quick rundown of the Falcon and Renaissance Soldier. Well... This place this takes place six months after the events of Avengers Endgame, where Steve Rogers goes on through time, decides after he returns Molnir and the Infinity Stones from the uh, past or maybe future or whatever, he passes along the shield <clears throat> to Sam Wilson. Uh, Bucky knew knew this, and Bucky even mentioned that him and Steve didn't know the implications of giving a black man the stars and stripes, which bit of oversight shows shows while Steve's intentions were pure there's still some oversight in his decision and uh also shows that the Marvel Universe is very much rooted especially with this show very much rooted in the social issues that are going on right now um <clears throat> and first episode Sam gives the shield to a museum doesn't feel worthy of it over time he becomes you know he shows us the viewers actions that say hey you can be you can be captain america you have earned the right to call yourself captain america just like at the the very very end of the last episode saying captain america and the winter soldier uh, we get to see him and bucky's journey on <laughs> samba feeling more worthy finding his place and deciding whether or not he wants to have the shield finding a new captain america and john walker who turns out to be the wrong choice Old friends, old enemies who become friends, and even friends that uh, you kind of kind of displace. I'm talking about obviously. I believe her name is Ava from the Door Melange. Her and White Wolf, you know Bucky. It's kind of sad that Bucky didn't get a chance to change his name from the Winter Soldier to Bucky because he's making amends and he's not gonna be that old person. Now, while the Winter Soldier's still somewhere in there, somewhere, but cannot be brought out with those you know, repeated words. I really hope that if not at the end of the new movie that's coming out, that at the end of season two, because there should be a season two to this, that Bucky will have earned White Wolf. That's something that people in Wakanda call him. Hopefully he can get that started somewhere else. <clears throat> so, implications. Well, if we weren't going through a global situation that we still are right now, hope you're wearing your mask, we were supposed to see at the end of this show, <clears throat> Yelena Belova, along with General Thunderbolt Ross, recruiting Helmut Zemo, Baron Zemo, into the Thunderbolts. The Thunderbolts is a, in the comics, in the 80s, it was a group of villains, while the Avengers were gone and disassembled, they were villains that pretended to be heroes so they can gain favor with the government and then gain their secrets, know everything, and be able to use it against them. Unfortunately, that deflected on him when the villain Screamy Mimi, going by the name of Songbird, actually did reform and ended up betraying on the evil people that were in the Thunderbolts. The Thunderbolts have they've been compared to DC Suicide Squad, where not in the comics, they didn't give them shock collars or they didn't threaten to blow up their heads with bombs. It was just kind of a thing where here's a superhero like Luke Cage, Bucky Barnes. They would be with these group of people and say, hey, you want to reform? Cool, you can reform, and I'm going to be guiding you and make sure you're doing the right thing. Similar but different than uh, Suicide Squad, and I really, really, really hope that they do a Thunder, if and when they do a Thunderbolt show or movie, that they do not do it like Suicide Squad. You know, it's fun to compare and it's fun to do similar things in this race to see who's better, who's better, DC or Marvel. I love Suicide Squad. DC has a really... And, and what James Gunn looks like he's doing with it. Magnificent. Marvelous even. But don't do what they're doing. Uh, even Thunderbolt Ross. We all know he's going to become Red Hulk. 
Red Hulk had his own group of Thunderbolts, and I believe he led them in 2018, which consisted of Deadpool, Elektra, Punisher, Frank Castle, uh, the leader, the leader of all people, and Venom. Agent Venom, uh, not Eddie, wasn't Eddie, the Flash Thompson. And of course, they all they all wore red. Venom can change his colors to red. Oh, and Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider actually joined that group. Really fun book. I'm not a fan of the art too much because it's the traditional artist who does the Frank Castle books. But the story was great. I need to find an omnibus for it because I really enjoy reading it. Uh, Bucky Barnes joined the Secret Wars. The bringing back of the Secret Wars event where worlds were colliding and different realities were going on. Bucky led that those Thunderbolts, which had Cloak and Dagger in it. So the Thunderbolts can be more or less an X-Force, where X-Force and the X-Men, you know, they weren't afraid to kill. They would do Black Ops. This is what Thunderbolts technically can be. A uh, U.S. agent traditionally is part of that group, which, funny enough, Marie Louis Dreyfus, also known as Val or Dick Contessa, who showed up to give Walker another way of being able to be a soldier but not be a soldier, dubbing him the U.S. agent at the end of episode six. She was actually supposed to show up in Black Widow. So while Yelena was going to was going to show up at the end of this, she's supposed to show up in Black Widow. Don't know when, don't know how. Remember, Black Widow is a flashback, and I'm hoping that David Hayter's Red Guardian doesn't die, and I'm hoping the Taskmaster doesn't die because Taskmaster, pardon my snuffles. Taskmaster is also a part of the Thunderbolts. And Taskmaster is one of my favorite characters. So I really hope they don't kill him. Super, super uh, comic book movies and superhero movies have an issue with always killing off villains when you can just use them for other things. So the implications are, especially with John Walker and uh, Val, we might be getting Dark Avengers. She did mention that things are going to get weird. And Sam did mention aliens, androids, and wizards. Spider-Man's coming in November, December with the multiverse. Doctor Strange is coming next year in March with the multiverse. For all we know, Norman Osborn is going to get together a Dark Avengers group to show the world that we don't need those Avengers. We have these Avengers. And I'm actually looking forward to that. Uh, was it Flash Thompson? No, it was Mac Gargan. Mac Gargan was Venom in the... Uh, it's called Siege. It was a Siege event. And the Dark Avengers, Matt Gargan was Venom. Scream you meet me with still Songbird. Um, there's Moonstone, who proved to be the fake Carol Danvers. I love Moonstone. Moonstone's a great character. There is Iron Patriot, which was originally Norman Osborn. Still don't know how Marvel was able to use that in Iron Man 3, but who cares? Uh, Rhodey ended up taking Iron Patriot in the comics just to synergize everything. And Dakin, Wolverine's bisexual son ah representation he's actually he's he's an interesting character i really do hope they get to show dakin if not in the sh in a marvel show in a marvel movie dakin was their wolverine and then uh i believe doppelganger who was a doppelganger of spider-man after matt gargan wasn't venom anymore he came in it's it's a literal avengers group because they swap in and out and ragnarok the evil robot clone of thor that killed black goliath was actually played by Lawrence fishburne and uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp in the second movie he's part of the Dark Avengers so I'm interested in seeing where they're going to go with this now the one of the things I love about the show is aside from those two implications of the Thunderbolts coming which I love Thunderbolts one of my favorite comic book groups ever and Dark Avengers showing up which Avengers versus Dark Avengers is going to be a great battle the notions of racism and what it means to be a black person especially a black man in America the fact that we had a black showrunner, but we have white writers and a white uh, female lead writer. They did an amazing job. They didn't tiptoe around this. They tackled it head on. I feel like they really did, especially with An uh, Anthony Mackie's acting, did a really great job of showing you can be a superhero and still be racially profiled. Like when he first went to visit Isaiah in Baltimore. The fact that Isaiah said, you know, if you're a self-respecting black man, wouldn't want to be Captain America. And Sam, which is why I identify with him so much. Black people have bled, sweat, and died to help make this country. To make this country. With all the sacrifices that have been made, why would he 
shrink away from his responsibility or shrink away from the opportunity to do more and do his part. Excellent. Another thing that some people may have missed is that the show does tackle how we treat our veterans, especially not just when it comes to Isaiah Bradley, when it comes, you know, dealing with the Tuskegee experiments and how those people were thrown aside and, you know, black people were treated like they were nothing, even when they were soldiers. Not to mention that, you know, the first shot and uh, first person that died and first shot ran out in the Revolutionary War was a black man. But not just that. We're dealing with Bucky, how he has the trauma. We're also dealing with John Walker. John Walker, in this universe, he went to Afghanistan. He had two tours. He had to do things that he was directed to do, but he didn't feel like he was doing the right thing. And while his uh, friend, Lamar, who you know dies in episode 5, said you always make the right decisions in battle, when you have a person with that kind of trauma, he, he, he's questioning what he can do. He's questioning and doubting himself. He couldn't even beat the door of Melange, who aren't super soldiers. They're just very, very, very elite. And the way that the council, the hearing, just dismissed him, stripped everything away from him, not because they were mad that he killed a foreign national on, you know, in, in public. It's the fact that they have to make an example of somebody. And if you've ever been in a job like that where they try to make an example of somebody, you, you know exactly how much that bites. So... Um, it's also, again, a notion of trauma, how we deal with trauma. Sam is dealing with everything that he's been through as a black man, everything his family has gone through, trying not to lose what they own and what his mother and father had left for him and his sister and what they had bled and sweat to create on top of dealing with a world that doesn't want to give you loans, that doesn't accept you, people that are going to hate you for being Captain America because you're black. The trauma of Bucky having to deal with decisions that he he couldn't control himself, but it was still him. He still re feels remorse for it. Being able to heal, not by making yourself feel better, but by giving someone else closure. And also the trauma of Sharon. Sharon Carter being completely left by the system that she had championed for and now becoming someone who is a major threat to them. Uh, let's talk about the glow-ups. The glow-ups, of course, is Sam and Bucky. You know, Bucky has that... He's right-handed. Bucky has that nice vibranium Wakandan arm that, even though it sparks and looks like he takes damage, it probably self-repairs really well. Excuse me, Sam, that not only got a new suit as new Captain America, he he has his own moves. He has uh, He has his own formation. He has multiple red wings. He's definitely got a glow-up. Helmut Zemo, Baron Zemo, I gotta say he got a glow up as well because he went from being this very selfish, evil person in the Civil War who, he lost everything, he lost his family, We, you know, he announced in this show, if you don't read the comics, if you didn't watch Earth Might's Heroes, he was a Baron in his country before the country was destroyed. And while Tony Stark and Bruce, uh, Bruce Wayne, uh, Bruce Banner are indirectly responsible for making Ultron, who more or less destroyed the country by trying to destroy the world. His anger and his anguish, his trauma was displaced to the Avengers. But he had a glow up. He showed that he hates super soldiers because of what they can do and what they represent. But he showed respect for Captain America. And he shows respect for Bucky Barnes because Bucky Barnes didn't want the serum. Initially, Cap didn't want to see him either. He doesn't trust anybody that wants to grab at power so quickly because whatever reasons you have for that power can be corrupted. He is not just a one-note, you know, not black and white villain. He's he's has some great to him, which makes him perfect for this iteration of Thunderbolts. If anybody knows him from the comics, you know Zemo. He's part of Hydra, more or less an evil Nazi guy, kind of. But he becomes citizen... Funny enough, he becomes Citizen V when he joins the event, uh, the Thunderbolts. That's his secret identity. But, you know, he's a Hydra agent. He's a bad guy. And this, not so much. He wasn't part of Hydra, but he, he has that morally gray side. But he's a very learned man. He's obviously not racist because he's listened to Trouble Man and understands what it stands for intimately. Uh... He's just an all-around great character. I really cannot wait forward to seeing more Zemo. And I hope we get to see more Zemo dancing sooner or later. 
<sighs> so I call it glow ups. Let's call them uh, poop downs. A poop down goes for Sharon Carter. This this bites, guys. I I can see her being bitter because Steve went ahead and got your great aunt. Even though you two kissed, that's something that still doesn't make sense to me. People don't make it weird. It's through marriage. That's his niece through marriage now. But it's just kind of, it's so weird that you were supposed to be with her. Captain America was with Sharon Carter all throughout the comics, especially in the uh, mid to late 90s with the reboot. I cannot find my Captain America number one from 98, but Sharon Carter was a big part of that. They were on again, off again. He was on again, off again with Black Widow. And one continuity has she has a child with Sharon. He has a child with Natasha. It's I can if that was where her bitterness came from, it doesn't. It comes from being disillusioned from America and what it can stand for and giving her life. And she had been she felt betrayed by her friends. And she is essentially betraying Sam and, you know, Bucky. Uh I fully predict her to either be the big bad, if not in the new Captain America movie, Captain America 4, to be the big bad in, <clears throat> if they do a season two of this show, which I really hope they do. it's a bit, You're able to tell more of a story and able to flesh out characters through these, you know, six to eight episode uh, shows. So, in the middle ground is John Walker. He starts off as a guy who you see, like, he has a credential to be the next Cap. You know what he's been through. You can tell that you see the two people in his life, both people of color, both, you know, his wife and his best friend. He cares. He's down with the struggle, but he's still a jerk and he's still an a-hole. He, you know, and then taking the serum just brought out his aggression more. But in that last episode, we saw that when it comes down to it, he can make the right decision. So I can't really see him being on the Thunderbolts, where the Thunderbolts are going to be people with checkered past, like ghosts. From Ant Man and the Wasp, people who probably have done really bad things, while he has also done bad things. He did in the service for his country, which makes things better. That's another commentary that someone should speak on. But he'll probably join Dark Avengers as U.S. agent and be their U.S. agent. I can't see him as a Thunderbolt, but if he joins Thunderbolts, that'll be fine. And last thing I want to talk about movie in the season two. So they've already confirmed. Captain America 4. Anthony Mackie gets his own movie. I'm really happy for this dude. Um, comic book accurate suit. Great actor. Great dude is bringing out the most in this character. Making me care more about Falcon than I ever have before. While he doesn't have any really notable arcs in his comic book. His comic book is basically him dealing with America and people accepting him as Cap. While at the same time leading the Avengers against cosmic threats and threats abroad and, and, and at home I, I feel there's so much they can do with him they can do serpent society which should be mostly a multicultural if not mostly black group of villains you know with deaf adder cotton mouth several characters like that uh there's 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 a tons of things they can do with sam wilson as captain america they can even do uh they can even do I'm trying to think of a really deep Captain America storyline. I don't think they, they already did Nomad for for Steve Rogers. They, there's there's some other things in the past. All they had to do is just change it into Sam and make sure you address, you know, this is a black dude as Cap. You can't just kind of wash over that. You can't beat it with a dead horse, but you can't wash over it at the same time. Um, as, as with season two, if Sharon is not the villain of this fourth movie, she has to be a villain in the season two and they have to deal with Sharon Carter sooner or later. Her being the power broker is just, it's sad. It's really sad. But I do appreciate that we're going to have characters like Cap, the name of characters like Cap, Thor. The, Hulk is kind of an interchangeable thing. People call those affected with gamma radiation Hulks, but they're not the Hulk. There's several different Spider-Man, Spider-Men, Spider-People. I like the fact that Captain America is kind of like James Bond now. You know, our second Cap is a black dude who was accept, you know, chosen by the first Cap. And literally, Anthony Mackie was told by Chris Evans in private at his home, hey, you're going to be the next Captain America, which is a really great way of wrapping up this story here. This is my, you know, those are implications. This is what's going to happen, what's probably going to happen. All in all, 
I have to give the entire show a 5 out of 5. Social commentary, uh, how well the characters were portrayed by their actors and actresses. <sighs> Carly Carly makes me want to put this set up a 4.5. But the fact that this is, this is a show that I can see myself watching over and over and over again. Even if, it, you know, a lot of people say, oh, if you put stuff in the background, you really don't care. No, if I put this in the background, I'm probably going to stop for five or ten minutes to see a specific part that's really, really good and then go back to it. It's not like, uh, I won't throw any specific movies out there just yet, but it's not like X movie where, all right, it's in the background. It's background noise. When I take a break, I can look at the scene. No, this is one of the things like Iron Man, Iron Man 1 and Iron Man 2. Even if I just want to throw it on just to have something on, I end up sitting down and watching 80 to 95% of the movie. Same thing with Avengers, Age of Ultron. This is one of those things where I can just continue to watch. So 5 out of 5 for me. Please, let me know what you think of my implications on Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Or should I say Captain America and the Winter Soldier? Let me know what you thought of the show down below in the comment section. Please remember to give me a thumb up. Pardon me, give me a thumb up. Comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, get notified of more videos like this. Share the video so others can, you know, get a little deep dive into the comic book world of the MCU. I tend to do more videos like this. The next show that's coming up is Loki, and I believe that is in June. Uh, until then, I will have something that will fill in this slot on Fridays. I'm probably going to go back to having videos on Thursdays as well. So, as always, guys, thank you for your time. Please be good, be blessed, wear a mask. Wash your hands. Black Lives Matter. Be good to yourself and others. Please don't be a jerk. And I will definitely see you next time.